Okay, so hopefully you've watched example one, where we uh, found the roots of this particular equation. If you haven't done it through with me, go back and actually watch it first of all. So we used a quadratic formula uh, to solve it. We got to this kind of what would have been a sticky point, which would be the square root of negative 36, but we introduced the idea of, com of an imaginary number such that we could make our complex solution or a complex root. We've got two of them, in fact. Um, one is 2 plus 3i and the other is 2 minus 3i. Well, we know when it comes to the solutions of quadratic equations like that, that we could prove that one of our uh, solutions is actually a root by substituting it in to the left-hand side and showing that the answer is zero. So we should be able to, if we've already said that our solutions are x equals 2 plus 3i, for instance, then what we should be able to do to prove that my solution is correct is substitute in x squared minus 4x plus 13. So we actually should be able to do 2 plus 3i and 2 plus 3i. In other words, what we should be able to do is to involve complex numbers in everyday mathematical calculations. Can we uh, add them? Can we multiply them together? Can we square them? And all these kind of things. So I want to be able to prove that and show that the answer is zero. But first of all, we just need to look very quickly at some of the arithmetic of complex numbers. I just want to very quickly go through uh, the arithmetic, in other words, addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, and division. So addition and subtraction, fairly straightforward. So basically saying that we've got these four terms, A, B, I, C, and D, I, and we want to bring them together. And with any uh, algebraic expression, you would gather like terms together. And so we would think of gathering the real terms together, in this case, A and C, they're the real components of the complex numbers. And we would do the same with the complex numbers. We would have bi and di, but we would normally uh, write the, uh, the imaginary part effectively as a common, with a common factor of i. So we would just write the, we'd work those two things out. If they were numbers, we'd add them together. So that's the idea behind it. And if you look uh, down here, let's bring this up a little bit as our example, 2 plus 3i plus 1 minus i. We're basically, if we, we don't even need to write them with brackets in. And we can say that 2 plus 1 is 3. Positive 3i minus 1i is positive 2i. So the answer there is 3 plus 2i. So it's quite straightforward to add complex numbers in this form. And subtraction is the same. We just have to be careful, as always, when we're dealing with expressions which follow a subtraction uh, calculation, in that in many ways we have to think about multiplying out that bracket by negative 1. So we're subtracting c, but we're also subtracting di separately. So although we're not just dropping the brackets, you believe with negative c plus di. So you're subtracting whatever, or you're changing the sign of that di term. So just a little bit to be cautious about. And if we put them together, we would end up with something like a minus c, and then plus b minus di. But most of the time, we're not going to be dealing in letters and variables. We're going to be dealing uh, with uh, numbers. I just put in something here that was a little bit less uh, run-of-the-mill. But it's the same idea. Here we've got a complex number 4 minus 2 root 2, root 2 over 2i minus a half plus root 2 over 6i. And it may be best to think of that as the first complex number. I'm going to multiply out those two terms, minus a half and subtract root 2 over 6 
if I gather my real terms together, that's 4 and negative a half, which gives me 3 and a half. Or we usually write in complex number form, we wouldn't write a mixed number. So we'll write that as 7 over 2. And then when it comes to our fractions, we've got negative root 2 over 2i minus another root 2 over 6i. Okay, so if we think about it in terms of, uh, well, let's just write them, let's just write them down side by side, first of all. I'm going to change that to 3 root 2 over 6i because I, I know that I'm going to have to. But when I'm taking a common factor, you'll notice that I'll make that a plus. Um, in fact, I won't, I'll take a negative common factor, and in the bracket, there'll be a plus sign. And that's the important thing to think about. Uh, negative um, root 2, 3 root 2 over 6, plus root 2 over 6i. So I effectively have to add these two together, and that gives me 4 root 2 over 6i, which I could simplify. 4 and 6 become 2 and 3 to that. So different ways to get the imaginary term there. We're simply saying negative uh, 3 root 2 over 6. Take away another root 2 over 6 is negative uh, 4 root 2 over 6. You don't necessarily have to take the common factor as I did there. But either way, Addition and subtraction is basically about bringing together and following the instructions for the real and imaginary terms separately. Okay. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, the arithmetic of the multiplication and division. In fact, well, let's leave, we'll leave that one there. We'll come back to it in the next video just to keep the videos uh, small enough. So the next example, we'll do example four and five so that you can learn about multiplying and dividing complex numbers. So check that one out and we will be coming back to the original idea of how do we prove that, uh, that if we substitute a complex number into a quadratic function we can get the answer zero. So I will be go back to that original slide too. Okay.